Hey, let's talk about COPD. Come with me. Hey everyone, Dr. Richard Lai here with Study Acupuncture with me. Now I welcome you back to the channel. Let's continue on this month with biomedicine board exam preparation. Now today's topic is chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder or COPD for short. So what is COPD? COPD is a categorical name for a group of obstructive pulmonary disorders, which if you break down the word itself, it's a category of pulmonary disorders, meaning disorders that affect our respiratory system. And these pulmonary disorders are obstructive in nature. That's the key word, obstructive. And so why are we paying so much attention to that word obstructive? And the reason we're paying so much attention to that word obstructive is because of one of the principles of yin and yang, which applies to all facets of our life. So for example, there's day because there's night. Likewise, there's obstructive disorders because there's also restrictive disorders. And in this episode, we're going to talk about chronic obstructive pulmonary disorders, which in general is an obstructive type of respiratory issue. Now it includes diseases like emphysema and things like chronic bronchitis. Now these types of respiratory issues are obstructive, meaning the patient's going to have a hard time exhaling all of the air that's in their lungs. That's the word obstructive. It's related to like the word obstruction. Obstruction means a blockage. It means an obstacle. It means something that prevents or it impedes passage through. So with this type of patient, again, they're going to have a hard time exhaling all of the air in their lungs. On the other hand, with restrictive lung diseases, these patients have a hard time filling their lungs with air, which the most common restrictive lung disease is idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is a disease that causes a scarring of the lungs. That's what fibrosis means. Fibrosis means a thickening or a scarring of tissue. Now, why does idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis happen? Well, the answer to that is that we're not really sure. That's what idiopathic means. Idiopathic means unknown cause. Now, we know that there's some things that are linked to fibrosis. So things like viral infection or smoking or long-term exposure to dust, especially things like metal dust or wood dust. So that's, for example, people who work construction jobs. And long-term effects of inhaling or just being around all that metal dust or that wood dust while they're working on building skyscrapers and houses, that could be linked to pulmonary fibrosis in the long run. So again, with restrictive lung diseases, the patient has a hard time filling their lungs with air because the lung tissue is so scarred up. So expanding the lungs is really difficult. Now with COPD, COPD includes diseases like asthma, emphysema, and chronic bronchitis. Now these are all diseases that are obstructive in nature. For example, with emphysema, emphysema is a type of chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder. Now with emphysema, there's damage to the alveoli of the lung. The alveoli are basically these tiny air sacs in the lung where gas is exchanged. Basically, when we inhale, this alveoli expands like a balloon so that the body can absorb the oxygen that our lungs inhale. And where does that oxygen go? It goes into our blood. Remember we talked about in the previous episode about how blood goes into the lungs and it gets oxygenated there. So the absorption of oxygen turns the blood that goes into the lungs into rich oxygenated blood, and then it goes back into the left atrium, left ventricle, to be pumped out to the body. But with emphysema, things like smoking, things like exposure to pollution, that can cause long-term inflammation to the alveoli. That can cause the alveoli to scar, and it's going to lose its elasticity. So if it loses its elasticity, then it's not going to expand well which in turn is going to make exhaling really difficult and tiresome for the patient. And the lungs can actually become permanently enlarged as a result. So when you look at the patient's form, their chest is going to look like a barrel, which is actually termed barrel chest. So now, what are the typical signs and symptoms that we would see in a patient with COPD? The typical symptoms are, number one, chronic cough. Number two, expectoration. And then number three, exertional dyspnea. Now, dyspnea, it just means shortness of breath. It's basically the sensation or this feeling like you can't get enough air. 
Now, the intensity of these symptoms, they're going to vary from patient to patient. But in general, for all cases, the onset of it is slow. And as the disease progresses, the dyspnea is actually going to happen at progressively lower and lower activity levels, which everything we do requires different amounts of energy from us. Climbing upstairs requires more energy than just standing up from a stool. Now, with COPD, at one point, you'd be able to walk up the stairs that you need to get into the house and be just fine. But as the disease progresses, climbing those same stairs are going to feel like you climbed two flights of stairs. And after you climb those four steps, you need to sit down and rest for a really long time. And as the disease progresses more and more, the dyspnea is going to happen at lower and lower activity levels. So even something simple like standing up from a chair can be really tiresome. Even something as simple as rolling over in bed can actually make you feel extremely short of breath. And for me, I've worked with patients who were late stage COPD, like gold stage four. Literally, the only thing that they could do was lay in bed. The tiniest little bit of movement, it felt like they used up all of their air. I had this one patient. She's a lovely lady. I treated her in a nursing home. And you could tell she's a really sweet person, but medically, she was extremely compromised. Gold stage three, four. She was cognizant of everything too. And she told me, every treatment, she just told me, just leave me alone, give up on me, I just want to die. And she was asking the doctor to put her on hospice. But I didn't give up on her. After weeks and weeks and weeks of therapy, just starting off first with small movements, I had her bend her elbow, I had her straighten her elbow, that was it. And then we would progress it up to do it three times, bend your elbow, straighten your elbow. The next day, we would up the ante a little bit. The next day, we would up the ante a little bit more. And I would tell her all the time, I'm not going to give up on you, so you don't give up on me. So now let's bend your knee. Let's straighten your knee. Let's breathe. Let's expand your chest. Let's exercise those breathing muscles. And the biggest hurdle was like, today, let's try sitting up at the edge of the bed just once. And then slowly but surely, little by little over time, we got her to the edge of the bed. We got her to stand. We got her to get into her wheelchair. Now, this is someone who, when I first met them, just turning their head or letting me reposition the pillow under their head, that took out all of their energy. So fast forward from that to the end of care. She was walking short distances from the bed to the bathroom. She was participating in all these activities in the nursing home. She actually even became the editor of the monthly newsletter in the nursing home. So it just goes to show you what a little bit can do over a long enough time horizon. Now, the last thing we'll talk about is what a gold stage is. I mentioned my patient before, she was gold stage three or four. So now, what does that mean? Basically, for COPD, there is a severity scale. That severity scale is called the GOLD classification system. GOLD stands for Global Initiative of Chronic Obstructive Lung Disease. Now, this scale, it goes from zero to four. Four is the most severe. Zero is someone who's at risk. Now, this scale is based on these abbreviations, FEV1 and FEVC, which you can get these numbers through a pulmonary function test. FEV1 stands for Forced Expiratory Volume. And forced expiratory volume is how much air you can force out of your lungs in one second. That's what the one stands for. FVC, that stands for forced vital capacity. Now, this one is regardless of time. This is just the max amount of air that you can breathe out after you breathe all the way in as much as you can. And so there's a ratio or a percentage that you can get from these two metrics. Which, with an obstructive type pulmonary disorder, you'd have a low one second forced expiratory volume to forced vital capacity ratio, which that's defined as less than 70% in adults. So I'll show you this table here. And on this table, you can see 70% all the way down. That's a low one second forced expiratory volume, or FEV1, to forced vital capacity, FVC ratio. Now, if it's an obstructive type, that means that you would get less than 70%. So that's why you can see on this table, less than 70% ratio all the way down. And doctors will use this number to see if the treatment that they're prescribing is improving. So for example, they would give a patient like that bronchodilators. And then later they would retest to see if the bronchodilator medication is improving. So they would see if there's an improvement in this ratio of FEV1 to FVC. Now, if you look closely at this table, the severity of COPD goes up as your FEV ratio decreases compared to what would be expected of someone who is your age and your height. So, for example, let's say you're a 35-year-old woman 
you're able to expire 1.5 liters in one second. And for your age and your height, it's predicted that you'd be able to get 2.5 liters out. So your 1.5, which is what you can do, and what you're expected to do for your age and height is 2.5. 1.5 divided by 2.5 is 0.6, which is 60%. So your FEV1 would fall into gold stage 2 which is an FEV1 that falls between 50% and 80%. And of course, to be classified into any of these stages, your FEV1 to FEVC ratio would be less than 70%. All right, everyone. So that actually brings us to the end of this episode. And if you want to find out more about COPD straight from the Global Initiative, you can go to their website to get access to all of their resources for learning about obstructive lung diseases. And I'll actually link their website in the description below. And if you want a study guide to go along with this episode, just go to the podcast section of my website, which this episode is episode number 65 on COPD. All right, everyone. Until next time, God bless and happy studying.